Bridgeport, you got to go directly to the source. I'm talking about the man that knows everybody, Ed Marshevsky of Maria's. Hey, Ed. Hello there. Great to see you. What's going on, Gene? I got to learn everything about Bridgeport, man. I can tell you all I know. Let's Five go. minutes or less? Sure. Let's okay, do it. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> let's talk about your family's history with Bridgeport. You know, my mother came here. She started working with uh, another Korean lady who owned this business. Uh, it was called Kaplan's Liquors. And after meeting the woman, she asked my mom to purchase the place because she wanted to move on. And she operated this place for a long time. It was old school back in the day. It was a uh, kind of rough and tumble part of the neighborhood. And Maria basically became the mom to all the retirees, ex-felons. Uh, and troubled, uh, you know, youth. people, youth, I guess, the neighborhood. <laughs> it was a packaged goods store and a bar. So what did you guys do? You expanded it? So my mother was working here for a long time and she was kind of getting tired of it. So we changed the bar. We basically started bringing craft beer and we opened up this expansion place with a new um, restaurant attached to it called Kimsky, which is a Korean Polish um, street food place that we do with Chef uh, Juan Kim. So we would always joke about putting kimchi on a hot dog or kimchi on a polar sausage. Mm -hmm. And we started serving them. And as we decided to do this expansion, we said, why don't we just make the entire restaurant based on this culinary experience of like this kind of weird hybrid immigrant experience of Korean. Your experience. Yeah, our experience, yeah. But other Korean Polish yeah. people's experience as well. So through that experience of serving craft beer though, we realized that a giant community of weirdos who are into beer we started meeting all these beer aficionados, home brewers, brewers, met the breweries that existed in Chicago at the time, and we got really inspired by them. For a couple of years, we started home brewing, started making stuff, and then we just leapt into it by opening up a small facility down on Halstead Street. Well, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, you should come by. We are basically at the gateway of Bridgeport. We're just over Bubbly Creek. So oh, is, and Bubbly Creek is the border of Bridgeport. That's right. So that's Bubbly Creek right there. So we're 100 feet away from Bridgeport. This is technically McKinley Park. Why is it called Bubbly Creek? Is it, is it bubble for not, not well, good reasons? In the back of the yards, in the stockyards in general, all the waste from the, from the animals they slaughtered was thrown into the creek. And all the waste and the bones and the marrow and stuff bubbled. And in fact, it encrusted the river many times where there are photographs from the early 1900s of people walking on lard no. over the creek. No, no. And that's, you know, that's... But you don't use that water in the beer. No, not, <laughs> not all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have a more exciting experience for people mm -hmm. to taste our beers by being able to come to our tap room. How is building a brewery in a community bringing the community together? Well, you know, I'm a firm believer that um, all cities need these third places, right? These places that are semi-public, semi-private, that allows people to get together and have a conversation over a coffee or a tea or, in this mm -hmm. instance, beer. We get a lot of uh, people who live in and around the neighborhood here who are delighted that we've created this other space where we can have people hang out together, provide jobs for local people, and have another reason to come to the neighborhood. There are plenty of reasons to come to the south side, and here's another great reason to come to Bridgeport, the community of the future. Well, we gotta go to your next spot. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Okay. So this is our uh, experimental cultural center called the Co-Prosperity Sphere. You're a creative force in Bridgeport. Why this? Well, you know, this space we're able to have an interesting hybrid space where we have exhibitions, performances, talks, screenings, workshops, meetings, and now of course run a 24-7 radio station. And we started publishing all these magazines, an art magazine, Lumpen magazine, a design and photography magazine. What is the magazine Lumpen? Describe it. Lumpen is kind of like a counterculture, underground, independent uh, zine covering politics, music, art, and weirdness. Seems like you have a ton of artists. Well, you know, the greatest thing about this neighborhood, it's always been very affordable for most people to live and work in, uh, especially for artists who, who need larger spaces so they can have their studio. Um, of course, in recent years, you know, gentrification and increase in real estate has happened all over the place, but it's still very affordable here. Uh, we just want to make this a, a vibrant, safe community where people can enjoy themselves. I love this neighborhood. I love the opportunities we're presented here. I've always been a big fan of um, the fact that you could do whatever you want in the city of Chicago, and especially so in Bridgeport. To find all of these places we highlighted in today's video, head to the Chicago Sun-Times website.
See you next time on The Grid.